Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna continue going through the challenges with 100 days of SwiftUI. So you can see I here have here on the screen, day 19. This is like the very first true app challenge. So building something from scratch, you're not just adding on to an existing thing you have. So let's see what it says for the challenge day, and then let's go build it. So first challenge, uh, going back, learning more, kind of consolidating what you've done. So here, if you scroll down, you can see the challenge. Uh, you're going to build an app that handles unit conversions. So users will select an input unit and an output unit, then enter a value and see the output of the conversion. So which units you choose are down to you. You can choose from one of these. So we can do like temperature, length, time, volume. Uh, I think for this demo, I'm going to do the length conversions. Um, and yeah, we can go ahead and get started. I can show you by the end of this video, this is what you're going to be able to build. So you're going to have just converter. You can see different input units you can choose. So right now I have it on feet. Output unit, we want it, let's say your inches. So if we do one foot, it's 12 inches. 12 feet, 144 inches. So if that looks good to you, let's go ahead and get started. So flipping over to Xcode, right now I have just a brand new project, completely blank. So the template code that you get when you create a brand new SwiftUI project. So go ahead and do that, and then let's start building this out. So the first thing we wanna do, uh, we're gonna get our like unit options. So if you read in the description, Paul explains that you could do basic math to actually get this, but Swift does have ways of doing the conversions for you. Uh, through like unit length what we'll be using. So I'll go ahead and do that So I'll create my unit options and this is of unit length and we're just gonna pick all of them Since you probably don't want to see me type this all out. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing from a project I had but feel free pause the video get all those in and again, use however many you want. You don't have to use all of these, but I'm gonna go with a bunch of different options. Next, we'll need a few state variables for actually displaying what's the measurement gonna be, what was the input unit selected, and then what is the output unit selected. So we'll have at state, private var, measurement, at state, private var, input unit, and at state private bar output unit. Okay, so now we have some of our properties. Now let's actually configure what the conversion is going to be. So our conversion calculation to actually get uh, the output amount that we want. So let's create var conversion calc. This is gonna be a type measurement but specifically unit length. Let's do let our input amount. That's gonna be measurement from the measurement that we created above. So we're casting it to a double. If that fails, we'll just make it zero. And then the unit we're deciding, we have our unit options and we're picking our input unit. Next, we'll do output. So output amount is gonna be input amount dot converted. So this is kind of the built-in functionality that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So instead of doing all the math on your own, you can convert unit options, output unit, and Swift will do it all for you. So you don't have to worry about actually doing the conversion, doing the math. And then finally, return the output amount. Next, we're gonna use a formatter. So if you've gone through 100 days of SwiftUI, you know that if you start using doubles, you can get many, many uh, trailing zeros. We don't really need that, so let's create our formatter to actually make things look nice. 
So let new format equals measurement formatter. And we'll do a new format dot unit style is equal to long. And then the new format dot unit options, the provided unit that we were passing in. And then we're just gonna return new format. So I know we've kind of gone through, created a lot of properties, created some calculated properties, um, but let's actually go build some stuff. So let's start actually laying out what our screen is gonna look like. So to match what we had before, you know, this is a form, right? Has different sections and has a couple pickers in it. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So go ahead and remove your text, hello world. We'll put this in a navigation view. And within that navigation view, we'll have a form, and then we'll have our first section. Within this first section, we'll have text field, and we'll say formatter.string from our unit options, input unit. And then we'll do text measurement. So that'll update. That's our first text field. And on here, we want to use the keyboard type, the decimal pad, because if people want to enter decimal values, more power to them. And then we get to our first picker. So on the picker, we're going to do the input unit selected from our input unit. And then we will let them decide for each for the unit options dot count. We will now create our formatted output. So let formatted output equals formatter dot string from our unit options. And we'll take that first one or we'll take whatever value we are in the current for each. And then we will have our text object. So we will have formatted output. And if we stop for a minute, we've been typing a lot. Let's just see how this is starting to come together. So you can see we now have the unit that's being selected and we can actually have our picker. So if we just run this real quick, you can see we actually have all the different units that we can select from. So if we keep going, we have our first picker. Now we'll create our second picker. It's very similar to the first. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste and change a few things around. So instead of input, it's obviously output. And selection, we'll use the output unit instead of the input. And then this remains the same. So going to be converting, getting a formatted output, and then actually returning that as a text. Last, we're going to add our next section. Um, so outside of this, add a new section. And we will give this one a header with a text of conversion. And in here, we're just going to have a text. So we can have formatted that string from our conversion calc. So now you can see if we run this and actually input, let's actually change from millimeters, say we want it to be in inches. Not sure why you want to do that, but 100 millimeters, you can actually see 3.937 inches. So lastly, if you want to add a nice little bit of styling, you can do the navigation bar title, make it look like an actual app. So if you hit command run, we can actually build this to our simulator. And you can see once this runs, we now have our converter. So we change the input unit, say we wanted to do miles and we wanna see what that actually is in kilometers. We can check one mile 
about 1.6 kilometers. So with that, I mean, this is pretty much done. You've got a full converter. You can go back and check and see the challenge of uh, handling unit conversions. So that really is it. Thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the walkthrough, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every week. And just remember, if you are just watching these videos and not giving these challenges a try, you're really doing yourself a big disservice. Highly encourage you, go through, give it your best effort to work on these challenges. But if you get stuck, come watch the video. You can see how I've done it. And you can even see ways that you would do it instead. You know, if there are things that you think would work better, please be sure to let me know in the comments. Happy to always take other perspectives into account. So thanks everybody. Catch you in the next one.